Yu Jiao Wang, Ni Hao. Um, well, it's wonderful to be here. This is my second year, and it's one of my favorite conferences to teach in. The energy is fantastic. Everybody's so excited to be here, and the level of studentship is really high, which I appreciate. People are interested in really learning some of the more sophisticated elements of yoga. Um, but mostly it's just fun. Everybody seems to be having a really, really good time. That's a great question. I mean, obviously, um, if you know uh, my background since I started with a knee injury, this is very important to me, particularly that, that uh, specific injury. Um, and it's, it is challenging, I have to say, because so much of yoga, like the fun part can be really fast and it can be really strong. And especially when you're in a group of people, if everybody's going really fast and strong, sometimes that's challenging for your own individual alignment. Um, everybody's a little bit different and even there are common patterns, like for instance with the knee, there are typical mis misalignments in the knee. Everybody's a little bit different. And so one of the most important things you have to do, especially once you reach the sort of threshold of pain, is most likely you have to slow down and find a teacher who really knows a little bit about anatomy, a little bit about biomechanics, um, or you can also get on your mat and experiment yourself, like with videos and, and things on YouTube. But ultimately, you probably are gonna have to slow down a little bit and really explore your own particular patterns and see what are the things that you're doing both on your yoga mat and also just in your normal daily life that are probably the patterns that are causing the knee pain. Um, every once in a while, of course, it's something medical and it's more serious and you need to see a doctor. But oftentimes, if you just make some little adjustments, if you, with the help of a teacher or if you, you know, if you can on your own, find the patterns that are causing the knee pain, then you can make those shifts. And then ultimately, you can heal the knee. The knee is actually kind of an amazing structure. It can actually heal. And then you can get back on your mat and go a little faster again. But in all honesty, you probably will have to slow down and, and find some of the trickier, more nuanced or subtle parts of the misalignments before you kind of just go for it in like the harder, deeper poses. Um, I mean, I've not seen that, so I, I can't really speak of a specific example when that's happened, but I'm guessing that you're right, that it's probably out there a little bit. And yeah, I think even in your question, there's the, you know, is the answer. Like if it's an exaggerated, um, promise of what yoga can do, it's most likely, you know, not completely true. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm very much the type of, of teacher and practitioner that believes that, um, uh, you know, there's always a little bit of good and a little bit of bad in almost every style and every modality, um, especially when you add in the complexity of individual patterns and also the other myriad things like diet and um, emotional habits. I mean, there's so many factors um, I try to stay away from really grand, absolute statements like yoga therapeutics can solve everything um, or yoga can you know, make you totally happy and peaceful. Um, it's not untrue. There are certainly a number of amazing, life-changing benefits to yoga and to yoga therapeutics. But you know, at the same time, we have to be balanced between that kind of idealism but also realism and realize that we're human and we're going to make mistakes. and. Um, that more, a more balanced perspective is usually what I advocate. <clears throat> wow, that's a really good question. Um, I mean, we could, I could probably spend all day talking about my advice in, in, on this topic. I think to give you a brief answer, I always like to start with um, that it's not horrible for you to have those superficial intentions. Like, you know, in a way, even in your question, it's like, sort of an implication that it's bad to have those intentions. And I think a lot of people come to yoga like they want to, you know, get more fit and, and, and feel better, you know, on a physical level. Like yeah. if it gets you in the room, you know, if it's a, if it's a gateway intention, um, I think there's some good in that because at least you're getting in the room. Um, and I also just have, have a lot of faith in everybody's, individual consciousness and individual heart, that the deeper intentions will arise, especially when you make a long-term commitment, a lifelong commitment to, to this kind of beautiful journey that is yoga. Um, I have a lot of faith that, you know, people come around to kind of the deeper reasons. And 
there's no doubt that it's out there and an Instagram and it all seems so superficial. Um, but I think we always have, we have to look f sort of to try to see the value in that, but then also at the same time, not get trapped in it, not get stuck in it. And also just encourage each other through conversation. Like how do you deepen your practice? How do you, um, take whatever reason you started and make it more of an effulgent, um, life fulfilling, um, reason, intention slash, um, experience overall. I have, yeah, I lived in Los Angeles for a long time, so I had a number of uh, celebrity clients. Um, and you know, the nicest thing about that is, you know, we see them up on a screen and stuff and we think, oh, there's something different, but the coolest thing is they're just people, you know? They're, and same with like yoga teachers, you know, you meet yoga, yoga teachers often seem like they're up on a pedestal and it's just a, it's just silly. I mean, I understand how it happens. Like I even get nervous if I meet someone, a celebrity that's like someone I really admire. Um, I still get nervous, but once you get to know them, like, you know, we're all just people. Everybody's got doubts and insecurities and everybody's got dreams and hopes. So the tricky part is sort of remembering that we're all the same, like on a, on one level, like we're all the same. And sometimes that can even help when you meet like famous people or whatever. You can be like, not as, you know, not as dorky, awkward. Like, what do I say? What do I say? You just, you know, just people are people. <laughs> well, that's a wonderful question. Um, it's the solstice, the 21st. So that's probably the reason for the yoga day. It's the, the solstice when the, uh, when the seasons are essentially changing. You know, ultimately, I'll just be really kind of, um, we say in Texas where I'm from, hokey. Hokey means like uh, kind of a little corny or cheesy. Um, but it's actually really quite serious. Like the practice, honestly, for me is about love. Um, and love, you know, is, can be, love can sound like just ah, love. Um, but I mean it in, in like a very pragmatic way. Like myself included, you know, people often look in the mirror and say negative things to yourself. I'm, I do this to myself all the time and I've been practicing yoga for almost 20 years. Um, and so just the, the, your ability to like forgive yourself and um, look in the mirror and actually authentically, quietly say something positive and to be able to walk around and strangers that you don't know or the, you know, the person that's helping you at the, at, the, at the market, or the person on the subway that, that bumps you, even though they didn't mean to, you know, to learn and the practice of, even if you get angry, to recognize that there's another choice, that you can shift that relationship and be a more loving human being all the time. I mean, it's a lifelong quest because everybody, it's, it's hard, it's a really huge deal. So if people's yoga practice, like with healthier bodies, healthier minds, and ultimately then can move toward having an, uh, having an ever more loving heart, like that to me is, that's the yoga. Like it doesn't matter how bendy you are or how, or you know, how strong you are or which style of yoga you do. I mean, it matters because it's important to find something you enjoy, but ultimately just asking that question, you know, are you taking steps toward being a more loving human being? For me, that's, that's what it's all about.